Okay, it is November the 5th, Sunday evening, about 50 minutes after the weekly open. Let's do the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. So this is the part where we would normally cover the news events for the week, but this week there's really no news events that are actually noteworthy. Powell and Lagarde speaking at different bank conferences, but ultimately don't really care about that too much. Um, so there's really no boomer news events to make a note of. So um, let's go ahead and dry, dive straight into the Bitcoin talk. Let's we'll start off with a higher time frame. The TLDR on high time frame is that we're still super bullish. So if we go ahead and do the top to bottom rundown on Bitcoin, um, we've been bullish all year long using the VWAPs uh, yearly in particular um, as support consecutively throughout the year. Um, where we're at now is we are starting to trade into resistance. So um, it does make sense um, to continue to play the trend, but be wary of the fact that uh, a pullback is probably in the not so distant future. Um, so the, the current view, like we've talked about for a little while now, is whenever you have these kind of major impulses like we've had all year long, um, you, particularly this one with how strong it was, um, you anticipate that price will continue to drift in, in the direction of the impulse. So um, the higher time frame view right now is that even though we're trading into last year's um, value area high amongst some other um, composite levels that we can point out in a moment, um, I do think that price will continue to drift up. So all my medium and you know lower time frame setups for the week are going to be um, dip buying for you know trend continuation essentially um, as we continue to push into the higher time frame resistance and expect that supply will start to take over and momentum will be eventually lost. Um, so TLDR is off the back of this impulse. We do expect that value will continue to shift up. I think that we will eventually start to build a range um, to distribute as we trade up higher. And um, from there, we will be looking to hedge out our spot again um, because I am spot long. I have zero interest in hedging it out uh, until I see some sort of indication um, that bulls have lost control and that bears have resumed control. Um, I do think that we'll see some sort of distribution built up between 36 and, and 38K. Um, we are trading into macro resistance and there, there's a lot of resistance in the 37s to 38s. So I think that this is where um, bulls will lose their steam. Um, from there, I do think that we'll eventually trade back um, to the next macro support at 30K. Um, so 30K, 25K, and 20K are all the macro supports to pay attention to, but we really don't want to worry about any of the ones below 30K uh, until 30K you know, actually fails. So I think that this is going to be um, the next major buy the dip is you know 30 or 31,000, you know, give or take. Um, and essentially how I'm viewing this, this support region is the same as um, the 10K flip back in 2019. Um, it was, you know, in hindsight, when you look at the chart, it looks like it was very easy to buy the 10K flip. Um, but having bought it back then, you know, especially because the uh, March 2020 event was, you know, only a couple months before that, buying that support resistance flip was actually uh, not easy. And it, I remember it being quite scary to do so. Um, so I think that um, that's how this will play out again. This will be macro... Um, support um, to see trend continuation um, into 2024. So um, before we get to that, you know, one of the key things I'm looking for is that I do think that we'll build some sort of range. Um, I'll be looking for some sort of larger sweep into the range high. If I see something like this off the back of shorts really getting squeezed out, that's going to be my main um, trigger to look to hedge my spot out until I see something like that or until I see some sort of maybe rounding off effect. Um, I really don't want to um, mess around with with hedges um, because likely what's going to happen for the people that are hedging aggressively is that they're going to um, end up in the cycle of opening and closing over and over again and um, that's a lesson that I learned the painful you know painful path a long time ago that um, with hedging it's probably better to be a little bit late than to be early um, you can really chop yourself up by opening and closing your hedges over and over again so TLDR I think that we will trade up eventually build some sort of distribution and then trade back down towards 30k. Um, if we do get, you know, if we do eventually get a move back into this region here, you you really need to, you know, man up and, and buy it because um, you know your invalidation is pretty uh, pretty reasonable. If we start to lose 30 or 29k um, and trade below 29s, then you know you're probably wrong, and you want to either look to a, you know ditch ditch your longs or just hedge them out. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, one, one of the key things that's going to stop people from buying uh, 30K, even though it's really obvious for basically any sort of analysis, 30K is obvious support. The two ways that um, it's going to be difficult for people to actually participate in are you know, time capitulation 
and um and you know an aggressive move down so the longer this kind of distribution cycle takes the more people are going to forget about this so that when we do trade down to this um it's gonna you know be something that they've forgotten right if it takes months to do this distribution and come back down to here um, people will get so bullish and so chopped up in this distribution that by the time we come back to here they'll have abandoned this kind of obvious thesis that was definitely how the 10k flip took place um it took several months for the you know support resistance flip to actually play out and um even though it looks like it was obvious it really wasn't to most people um just because the um the time element and then the other element would be the the move down being really aggressive right so if the move down just comes in like a really big puke, uh, a lot of people will be scared to buy that. And, um, you know, so in short, those are the two ways that uh, that buying the dip is going to be difficult. So that's pretty much it for our time frame, guys. TLDR, uh, in the short term, we're going to trade up. Eventually, I do think that we'll come back. Uh, if we don't come back, you know, the, the alternative way that this could play out, um, just to, you know, talk about different scenarios if we don't come back to this the other you know kind of bullish scenario would be us just using the singles as support so trading back down into like the 32s technically the 32s could be the next major support off these you know this kind of void um in this within this uh, impulse up um and if if that's the case then we're going to be trading up towards like 40 you know into, into the 40s at that point but um I do think that we'll probably trade back to the 30s but you know it's important to have you know all the plans lined up so 30, you know, in the, in the 32s could be, uh, could be the support. Um, my take is probably that um, if we do have some sort of violent down, down move, um, I think that the 32s would probably be the shorter term. So within this range that we're already building, maybe if we were to trade down into here, this would be the shorter term support. And then the 30s, you know, 30, 31 would be kind of the next like major support that would take place later in time into the, you know, 2024 um, timeline. So. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. For more information, check out the Paragon group with the link below, where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. Um, let's go ahead and move over into the altcoin verse and um, cover what we're, what we're thinking with altcoins. So, um, very similar argument with altcoins right now with the benchmark um, asset looking so incredibly strong. Um, you want to be chasing beta right now. I have zero interest in trying to run any scalping strategies right now. I want to be breaking out the spaghetti charts and doing the beta chasing this week. Um, so let's go ahead and run through some of the coins that I, I think are strong. Um, so obviously we need to talk about TRB. And, uh, you know, before I get into all these individual charts, the moral of the story with all of these is going to be buy shallow dips, right? If you, you, when you look at the chart, it looks like they could do larger pullbacks. And I do think eventually a larger pullback will come, um, but it normally, you know, comes much later than we expect in these kind of instances where the market is as strong as it is. And um, just like we talked about last week, buying shallow dips is the only way to participate in this stuff. Um, so you either mark out the, higher, the more shallow dips on your higher time frame, <clears throat> or you, when you have bullish daily VWAP structures, you buy daily VWAP. Um, retests that that's one of your best strategies that you can deploy um, for actually getting relatively safe entries that aren't going to put you underwater when you have found high beta coins that look good on higher time frame they look strong on spaghetti just buy the the daily vwap or the weekly vwap retest one of the two right the, the weekly vwap retest will be a better setup than the daily but it's obviously going to be a less frequent um, and thus less actionable setup um, so let's go ahead and run through the shit coins for the week um, obviously, TRB looks really strong. Um, a lot of my doodles um, for, for shallow pullbacks ended up playing out. So that's kind of the case with, uh, with TRB. Um, the shallow pullback into the quarterly band was your opportunity. Um, if you missed that and you want to play TRB, it's going to be buying daily and, and buying weekly VWAP retests. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a matter of time before TRB some sees some sort of next major leg up, which is crazy to think that this thing has, you know, gone up so much and we're just going to still want to be bullish on it, but that's that's how she goes. Um, next one I want to talk about was Tomo. So Tomo um, just had its most recent major um, kind of liquidation event. Um, we, we've seen this a lot with Tomo, right? We saw this back in June. We saw this back in August, and we're seeing it again now where we have these major pukes where price goes down, you know, 30% or something. Yeah, literally, literally went down 30% in one day. And... Um, you want to be careful that you're not too aggressive with buying the dip on something like Tomo. You want to wait for it to start to reverse course. 
um, but we had a lot of, sh of shorts opening off of this move. Um, so, you know, we had very, very large open interest increase off the back of this move down, which sim we saw similarly on both of these pukes as well. So I think even over here potentially, but I know for sure on, on the June and August pukes. Um, so Tomo's probably going to start to reverse course. And once these shorts start to get put under pressure, um, they're going to they're gonna un unwind, obviously. And um, being on the long side when those shorts start to unwind um, is how you catch a, a plus 25% kind of day on Tomo. So Tomo's one that I want to be aggressive with chasing longs on potentially. Uh, a similar story with INJ, although INJ already played out. This is the doodle from Friday's stream. It didn't actually go as low as I thought it would, but um, any of these coins that look like this, right? You know, I know people are tempted to want to short them, but you just got to play shallow dip continuation plays. So INJ, um, definitely, I, it's not something I would want to play where it's at. I would want to see it give me a better setup where it either consolidates or does a pullback, but um, long continuation on INJ makes sense. So that's pretty much it for all coins this week. Again, uh, I'm not really interested in scalping at all. My main focus is going to be um, getting that confluence between decent VWAP structuring and uh, things that look strong on the spaghetti chart. From there, I will be doing shallow VWAP retest and, and you know and view, you know retest off of singles and stuff. Any sort of shallow dips on things that have strong VWAPs and strong on spaghetti are good to go. That's pretty much it for the week, guys. I do think that um, it makes sense to be super focused up this week and, and um, you know, keen to trade a lot. There's probably going to be a lot of opportunity and um, good luck out there. Cheers, everybody.